Well, good morning all. This is a formal good welcome to folk. Um, for those of us on Zoom, we've been saying hello to one another um, and it's been good to see each other visually uh, as well. For anyone looking on, on live stream, good morning to you. Welcome again to uh, church being done completely virtually this morning. Uh, and uh, a welcome to anyone who may be looking on a little bit later on the YouTube channel. Good morning. I hope this finds you all well. Uh, this is our service for Holy Communion on today, the 10th of January, 2020. We are going to, oh, 21, sorry. Yes, I've just been shouted at from a distance. Um, it is 2021 and not 2020. Um, we are going to begin our act of worship this morning um, by using a song which we can sing along loudly because we're not in church. We can sing and praise God um, by singing this hymn, Hail to the Lord's Anointed. I just need to share the screen to be able to do that. And then we will indeed sing.
So we turn to some liturgy as we begin our service together. We meet in the name of God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, God is one. And again, we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom, whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we say sorry to God for those things that we know that we have done wrong. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. So hear the words of Jesus to you this morning. Friend, your sins are forgiven. Now go in peace. Amen. So we have our reading from the Bible, and Sue is going to read that to us this morning. Sue, over to you. Thank you. Can Hopefully you can all hear me. Yes. Reading is from Mark chapter 1, verses 4 to 11. And so John came, baptising in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptised by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Sarah is going to explore that Bible reading with us, Sarah. Thank you. Hopefully everybody can hear me okay. Uh, may the words I speak and the meditations of our heart be pleasing to you, O oh Lord. So, there are a number of interesting facts about New Year's resolutions. Around 45% of us will make them. The most popular ones tend to concern self-improvement or education. Number one is, surprise, surprise, getting fit. The second is becoming more organised. And the third is spending, spending less and saving more. Quitting smoking is number eight. But I love the ninth most popular resolution, which is to help others. Sadly, the reality is only 8% of people are successful in achieving their resolution and making a lasting change. 92% fail. But this morning we get to celebrate Jesus' baptism, in many ways a symbol of a new start the beginning of his adult ministry. Up until his baptism, 
Jesus's life was pretty unremarkable. It's hard to believe, isn't it? Jesus seems to have had a relatively normal childhood. His parents were clearly religious. They took him to Jerusalem to present him at the temple. And then at the age of 12, Jesus is shown as a very promising Torah student, precocious enough to actively engage the leaders at the temple. When confronted by his parents, he seems to have a clear purpose of his calling, being about his father's business. During Jesus' childhood, Israel was not an idyllic place to grow up. It was confusing, even bloody. During Jesus' childhood, probably around 3,000 people were crucified, left to hang on the road not far from Nazareth. Creation now, as then, is something less than what God intended. Instead of health, sickness exists. Instead of peace, war. Instead of freedom, slavery. People take what isn't theirs. People hurt others. People are taken advantage of. That wasn't how it was supposed to be. This present age is not what the beginning of creation had been when God made everything and it was good. No hurt, no tears, no sleepless nights, no debt, no sickness, no slaves. But it has got messed up, hasn't it? As time went on, we began to realise that things were so bad, things were so unjust, that it was going to take an amazingly radical act of God to set them right. Only he could usher in the radical change needed, the age to come when order would be restored. In the Lord's Prayer, we pray for a time when God will once again be in charge, when his kingdom will be reality. This is what John the Baptist was preaching. The end is near, the ax is at the root of the tree, the chaff is about to be separated from the wheat. At the beginning of the pandemic, I remember reading that some people were also seeing this time as apocalyptic. And I'm sure we all agree that if ever there was a time we needed his help, then it is now. But God doesn't bind himself to our preconceived notions of how he's supposed to work. He doesn't seem to be constrained by our systematic theology. He does what he wants, when he wants, in his own time. With Jesus, he brought the presence of the age to come into this present age, not content to wait until the end. Emmanuel, God with us. But Jesus's baptism wasn't run-of-the-mill baptism. The Holy Spirit showed up in a way so extraordinary, it was like a dove coming down and cooing over Jesus while a voice spoke over him. In fact, the whole episode does remind me a bit about the creation account in Genesis. The spirit hovers over the waters, God speaks, and a new order is created out of apparent chaos. The blessing over Jesus is remarkable in itself. You are my son, whom I love, with you, I am well pleased. This one simple line quotes Old Testament, two passages that held great messianic promise during the time of Jesus. To those of us listening today or catching up later, those biblical allusions seem nice, maybe even poetic, a convenient way to proof text the story of Jesus' baptism. But this is much more than mere proof text. This God encounter was so powerful, it encompassed all of the Hebrew scriptures, creation, prophets, psalms. It was all present at Jesus' baptism. And for Christians, we can see the entire Trinity is present here too. God the Father speaks, God the Son prays, and God the Holy Spirit 
prophets. From this point on, Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus was a changed person, empowered to do the work of the kingdom and to do it in a way nobody saw coming. He radically started doing kingdom things, the things of the age to come. He healed the sick. He cast out demons. He loosed the chains of people imprisoned to crippling disease. The end of times hadn't come, but the evidence of the future had broken in. Now, I can completely identify with John. He didn't see this coming and later sends his disciples to ask Jesus if he really is the Messiah. Jesus says, look, the deaf hear, the lame walk, Paul had the good news preached to them, a foretaste, an appetizer, but unmistakably the age to come. So what, you may ask? Come on, Sarah, we've heard this story before, but what's the big deal? The big deal is we're still on the same mission. We too live in this present age. Did you know more people are enslaved today than at any time in human history? And it's ugly. There's crushing poverty, overwhelming hunger, human trafficking, kids sold into slavery for sexual exploitation. And groups, but groups exist everywhere, motivated by Jesus' example to end this brokenness. Food bank, Esubi, Christian Aid, Family Support Work, to name a few. Brokenness is oppressingly present across the globe. And how much do you play a part in misusing our environment? Chances are something each of us is wearing was made in part by someone trapped in a sweatshop. To live as well as we do here in the UK takes a lot of cheap labour. And it's not just us. There have always been people that will lord it over others and do even more atrocious, despicable things. But as followers of Jesus, we too are baptized into spirit. We too are empowered to take a stand and face evil. Does this mean we have to change everything we've known and enter a new life upon baptism? After all, we don't have any indication of Jesus going back to carpentry after he was baptized. Wouldn't it be the same for us? Jesus is empowering, led him on a totally different track than he previously did. Or did it? His life after baptism still looks a lot like what he did at age 12. Intelligently ferreting out the truth of God's grace and mercy and proclaiming that to all the people around him. Perhaps that will be the story of your walk. You do what you've always done, but may God hover over you, speak amazing affirmation and totally transform your work so that it is clearly kingdom expanding. Will you dare to support the organizations I talked about earlier? Efforts designed to live out the reality of the age to come in the present age. So will you dare to seek God, to ask him to reveal how he's made you and how he wants your service to be? To be open to him, changing your preconceived notions of how life should be. That's when the adventure truly begins. So my invitation to you is to let Mark spark your baptismal imagination, because then you will give witness to God's determination to tear heaven apart to reach out to you. For Mark, God's entry into our humanity started at Jesus' baptism and was then confirmed at his crucifixion. I suspect I will be able to keep New Year's resolutions a lot longer than a few days if I had people around me supporting and telling me how I might be able to keep them. We have the gift of the Holy Spirit his word, the Bible, and that encourages us and reminds us that we are loved and close to God's heart. So today, 
let us hope to hear God saying to us, you are my beloved son, my beloved daughter. With you, I am well pleased. Thank you, Sarah. So for a moment, let us just keep silence as we share a, a little bit of liturgy in a second and reflect on what Sarah has shared with us this morning. So to share together, proclaim together what we believe. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So we turn to a time of prayer and Rob is going to lead us in our prayer this morning. Rob, over to you. So let's pray together. I'd like to use the words of a worship song to start with. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son. Father God, as we come before you this morning, our minds filled with challenges and difficulties all around us, we stop and look to you. We look to you, the one who is almighty God, the Lord of heaven and earth, the ruler of space and time, the creator of all that is and has been and ever shall be. Lord, we marvel at your love, and we rejoice in your goodness and grace. Thank you that in your great love you sent your son, Jesus Christ, into the world to suffer and to die upon the cross that we might be forgiven and set free from the power of sin and death. We praise and worship you for pouring out your holy and life-giving Holy Spirit to help us daily walk in Jesus' ways and to be transformed into the likeness of our Saviour. To you be all glory and honour, acclaim and majesty and might, now and forever more. Lord, we give you thanks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for your church worldwide, for all who seek to follow our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. We pray for all church leaders, evangelists, missionaries everywhere, both lay and ordained leaders. Please enable them to lead and guide wisely in these difficult and challenging times. Help every church family in every place in every nation to seek to love and care for each other in ever increasing imaginative ways. Lord, help us 
to encourage and build each other up. Help us to maintain contact and show care and find ways to strengthen and support the body of Christ, that he may be glorified and that others may see Jesus in us. Help us here at St Elizabeth as we journey into a new year to know your guidance and plan for this parish in the days that lie ahead. And we pray you, Lord, that you would encourage and bless David and Anne and their family as they prepare for their new adventure. Fill them with your Holy Spirit and your gift of peace in the midst of change and new beginnings. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we cry out to you for your world as it faces challenges and change, uncertainty and in some places chaos. Lord, we pray for world leaders everywhere and for our own government and ministers. Please grant to them wisdom, energy, compassion, discernment and unity as they seek to lead the nation at this difficult time. We pray especially for the nation of the United States at this time of upheaval and challenge. We pray for every effort to bring unity and peace, understanding of reality as opposed to misleading and dangerous influences. Grant, we pray to every side, humility and a desire for reconciliation. We pray especially for Joe Biden and his team, the strength, the wisdom and the abilities that they need. Lord of peace, Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we are encouraged by your word to pray for all who are sick and in special need. At this time of ongoing crisis, we pray for all who are seriously ill with COVID, for their families and loved ones. We ask at this time for all doctors, nurses, carers, and paramedics, all maintaining our hospitals and care homes. Lord, please renew their energy. Give them extra reserves of strength and your deep peace as they face daily unprecedented challenges. Help them to feel valued and supported by every one of us. Help us to play our part to protect their efforts. We thank you for the skill and dedication of those who work tirelessly to produce vaccines. And we ask that these may be administered effectively in the days and weeks to come. And Lord, we remember all who are ill with other long-term illnesses, who need treatment and care. And we pray at this time for all facing challenges to their mental health. We pray that you would meet each person at the place of their deep need. And just for a moment, we lift to you those who are particularly in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, a prayer for ourselves. I'm using a familiar worship song, pretty old now. If you know the words, join in at home. And maybe you could even look it up and use it in the days to come if you find it helpful. Jesus, take me as I am. I can come no other way. Take me deeper into you. Make my flesh life melt away. Make me like a precious stone, crystal clear and finally honed. Life of Jesus shining through, giving glory back to you giving glory back to you. Merciful Father, accept our Jesus. praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Rob. I haven't, I was singing that song in my mind and I haven't heard that for many a year. And I'll hold on to that song. For some time again thank you for we need to share with one another a sign of christ's peace let me begin by uh saying a bible verse and then we'll open up the zoom channel for people to give a greeting to one another a, a way of sharing a sign of christ's peace our savior christ is the prince of peace of the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you. 
and also be with you. We offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Feel free to unmute yourself for a second. Peace, peace be, be with you. you. Peace, peace, be with you. With you. peace be with you, everyone. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And peace to anyone peace looking on. <laughs> peace to peace. anyone looking on on Facebook live stream. Anyone joining us uh, a little bit later on the YouTube channel. Peace be with you. So we move to our time of sharing communion together with bread and wine. I think I need to share some liturgy, that might help. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them saying, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. The end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven saying together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. So we join with fellow believers across the globe as we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So however you are able, draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving. The body of Christ.
the blood of Christ. So we continue in prayer. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights, give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. It's time for us to sing again, to use song as part of our worship, uh, we're going to, um, at the start of this new year, you, you use the hymn, God is working his purpose out. Let me just give you a, a second and we will share that for you.
we come to our closing prayer of blessing. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. That brings our service on for this morning to a close and we'll say farewell in a second or two to those who are looking on via live stream a little bit later on on YouTube. Uh, do join us again next Sunday uh, in, in a similar way. If you haven't tried Zoom, um, it is fantastic to simply to see one another's faces. Uh, it helps to kind of draw the community together a little bit more in these challenging times. So um, do give Zoom a go if you can. Uh, otherwise, we'll see you and connect with you however we can over these coming weeks. But we do need to say farewell uh, to those who are looking on, say, on live stream and YouTube. Farewell to you for the moment. Bye. Goodbye.